Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, today, we are doing a special episode of the podcast, and we're giving examples of ways uh, that people can give back with their photography. And so I've invited Kevin Custer uh, to join us on the podcast. Kevin's a friend of mine. We met at the Out of Chicago Photography Conference two years ago. Um, and Kevin is big on Instagram, has a huge following there, and has a great career in photography. And recently he's had some awesome experiences and ways to, to give back through photography uh, by photographing people that live in le leper colonies in Nepal. So Kevin, welcome to the show. Glad to have you here. Thanks so much for having me, Jim. Really appreciate it. Well, Kevin, to, for those that don't uh, know you, uh, tell us just in a few sentences a little bit about, about you and, and what you do with photography. Sure. So uh, for 18 years, I was the senior photo editor and managing content producer uh, at Playboy Magazine and Playboy Digital. Uh, it was an incredible career. Um, and I had just uh, an, an amazing opportunity to learn from some just, you know, the top tier photographers in the world um, and get to collaborate with them. So that's really where I grew up and I learned my skills. Yeah, after I left Playboy, my sister, my brother-in-law, and I, we started a nonprofit called Watts of Love, and we distribute solar lights to people in uh, developing countries that don't have access to electricity. About a year and a half or so ago, we were in Nepal right after the uh, earthquake, and on our last day uh, prior to leaving, we had heard about a couple leper colonies right outside of uh, Kathmandu that oftentimes um, during the uh, dry seasons don't have access to electricity. So, you know, spontaneously, we went to the colonies. We really had no idea, like, what to expect, you know, how we'd be received. And it went really well, and it just really moved uh, my sister and moved I and the entire team. And we just promised the people that we were going to come back to the colony and distribute lights. And that happened uh, just this last October. So, so why, why, why lights? What, what's, why are you distributing lights? So people don't realize it, but um, there's 1.2 billion people on the planet that have no access to electricity. So what that means is once the sun goes down, they live in complete darkness. Most of these people uh, buy very expensive and very dangerous and toxic kerosene. And they burn this kerosene. Um, and just to kind of give you some of the stats, uh, more women and children every year are uh, severely burned and killed uh, by kerosene that are uh, diagnosed with HIV and TB combined. And what happens is when people buy this kerosene, not only is it dangerous and toxic, but uh, it actually keeps them in poverty because they're spending up to one third of their family income every day to buy kerosene. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. That, that's uh, amazing. So I tell people all the time, I'm like, what, what would your life be like if all of a sudden I gave you this item? right? And you could start recapturing one third of your daily income. What would that do to your family? Um, so it's really light is, is one of, you know, the World Bank has said light's the fastest way to give a fam to get a family out of poverty. Um, but there's also these benefits where you know, children gain up to two years more formal education. Um, and, you know, the overall, it just really changes people's lives in a very dramatic way. And most people don't know about it. Um, but when we were there and we were, um, this last time in October distributing lights, um, the first time I was there to be really honest with you, um, I did something in my career I had never done. Uh, I actually snuck a photo, even though, uh, you mean the, you took a photo of somebody and, and without them knowing that they were taking it. Correct. Um, even though we were at the colony and we'd, uh, had, uh, permission, from the management team there to photograph and interview people. Um, they were very, uh, and understandably so, just leery of us, uh, but also they were very, very conscious, you know, who is this guy walking around with this big camera, just randomly taking pictures. Um, but, and again, this was a year and a half or so ago, but um, my sister uh, was talking with this uh, two women from the colony and this woman reached over to give her a hug. And it was just a very powerful moment. And I, I, I snuck this image with my iPhone and my feeling behind it at the time was I'm hoping that the, you know, the means justify the ends because uh, I knew we were going to go back and I knew we were going to fundraise and I knew we were going to try and tell people about these people that um, live in the leper colony. So I just kind of felt at that time I made a very spontaneous decision, but afterwards I, I struggled with it. And this time when we went back to the colony, 
we had lights for everything, everyone. There was about 180 people that live in the colony. Uh, and when we, I went there, I told everybody in the team, I'm like, look at, don't bring your iPhones, don't bring your cameras, uh, because they were very, very, very uh, shy and reserved and being photographed. And I just really want to take this really slow and, and see what the receptivity was. Well, this second time when we were back, we actually wound up going to the colony uh, two days and then uh, a, a, a half day. And the receptivity was entirely different because it had given us time to interact with them, to go to their homes, to share stories, to laugh with them, um, to really kind of get to know them. And then the receptivity for them to have their photos taken was entirely different. Um, and it was really wonderful where it was like they were actually, you know, giggling and laughing, you know, as people were taking selfies with them. And what had happened was there was one man who, um, who basically asked me to go to his room and he really wanted to show me um, this photograph. And it was a photograph of him, uh, you know, in, in his prime. He just looked absolutely amazing. Um, and the thing that was so powerful about that is, um, you know, I don't think that that man, when he took that photo, ever knew that he was going to be affected by leprosy. And I knew that photographer had no idea, but it just struck me how powerful that photo was. And as that kind of sat with me throughout the day, a young boy asked me uh, that lived in the colony if I would take his portrait. He just thought I was going to do a snapshot. And I just really took some time to really capture a great, authentic uh, portrait of him. And as I was doing that, I said to him, I'm like, you know, I'm going to be here in Nepal doing some personal work. What do you think it would be like if I came back to the colony a couple days later and I photographed everybody in the colony and I photographed him and I, and, and I created a portrait and he was like, that would be absolutely amazing. Like, would you do that? <clears throat> and of course I said, yeah, I would. And when I came back two days later, the people uh, were absolutely amazing. They could not wait to be photographed. They could not wait to have their portrait taken. Um, and it was, it was really one of the most emotional and powerful photo uh, sessions I've ever had. These, you know, just to give an example, like two men came in and they had these brand new Nepali hats that they pulled out of a box and they took off their old hat and they put their new hat on. And I was like, can you, can you tell me a little bit about that? And through the interpreter, they were like, yeah, this was a very special hat that has never been worn before. And I'm going to wear this for this picture. And, and stories like that continued to happen. Like people would borrow a suit and a tie. They're just wanting to look as good as they can, huh? Correct. They wanted to look as good as they can, but really what it was um, is when they first came in, they were very stoic. Uh, they didn't, they didn't really express or emote. Um, and there was just this real sense of reservation. Like I, I tell people, it's kind of like when you see those pictures of the American Indians, you know, there's just no, they're very blank looks on their faces. Um, but as I started to talk with them, as I started to interact with them, their humanity, and their personality started to come out where you could just, you know, you didn't see them as people affected by leprosy. That's awesome. So I saw a couple kind of procedural questions, I guess. Uh, we're getting one question from Ben Aru Ben on Facebook Live um, that uh, was wondering about like cooperating, cooperating with government officials and how that worked. Uh, any, any procedural things people should be aware of, you know, in a third world country taking photos? Well, in terms of uh, in the colony, absolutely. Um, they, uh, even though I had been there for three days uh, previously, when we were distributing lights and actually taking pictures, when I went back to take formal portraits, um, I absolutely had to get permission uh, by um, 
the person that ran the colony and they had to get permission from uh, the Nepali government to allow me in there. So and, I would. And what are the health concerns with that? I mean, I, forgive me. I'm totally ignorant uh, as far as this, but I, I mean, this is a communicable disease, right? Yeah. So actually, and I, I'm really glad you asked that question uh, because most people believe that leprosy is gone, right? Um, if you've ever heard of it, people are like, oh, yeah, I heard about it in the Bible, but I, I didn't think it even existed. But it does. Uh, there's about a quarter of a million people that are diagnosed with it every year. Wow. And yeah. And actually, there's even uh, I think it was uh, two years ago or within the last five years, there's been 500 cases of of cases of people being diagnosed of it in the U.S. Um, and they're not actually sure the exact way that um, it is spread. Uh, what happened out in Yellowstone National Park, it was being spread through armadillos, which is crazy. Okay, uh, well, yeah, that's an interesting story. <laughs> so, uh, but they do believe that most of uh, the time leprosy is, is uh, that you have to have a specific genetic DNA makeup that makes you susceptible or receptive to receiving the disease. And then they believe it is also uh, <clears throat> passed through saliva. But there, it is really one of those diseases where not a lot is known about it. Um, but we knew going to the colony that once someone is living in the colony, here's the shame about it. So these people, most of them that you know contract the disease are very, very poor and they have no means of finances. And then when they contract the disease, they are completely and utterly shut out of community. And I mean, families write them off, friends write them off, and they're taken to these colonies and then so they're put in. So is it that they they can't be treated or that they don't have the money for the treatment? Or is, is there a treatment? I, I don't know anything about this. The vast majority of the time, they don't have the ability to medical professionals. They can help them. They don't. So what happens is, once they start radical change, they then are put into a left colony, and then the government is kind of forced to treat them. So when we were in the colony, um, no one there was uh, Did you catch all that? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'll, I'm texting her to get off. <laughs> hey, Sandy. Hey, 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 Sandy, what's up? Sandy? She might not be getting the feed. This is my first time using this Zoom uh, oh, okay. application. And there are a couple, you got to click to to join hey, in. You have to. Sandy, are, can you hear us yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> we're, gotta, we're still gotta, in the, the middle of an, the of an interview language. before this podcast. <laughs> Sandy? So she just said, uh, I can't hear you guys. <laughs> we can hear her. <laughs> um. You need to accept. How do we they could just, you need to, Yeah, if you just go you ahead and sign off for, for five minutes and then I can message you guys and we can get started on the next one. Okay. You want me to text saying that you're asking her to sign off? Uh, yeah, that'd be great. All right, signing off. Okay, I think they're both off. Okay. Okay, I'm still recording. We'll just edit that part out. No problem. So we'll just pick up there. So I forgive me, I'm totally ignorant on this, but this is a communicable disease, right? Like, can you can you catch this by, by being there? Well, what's the danger of, of entering the colonies? So in theory, yes, you could. Uh, but we knew and we uh, our understanding was when we went into the colony that everybody living in the colony had been treating. 
treated and was no longer were, were they contagious. So, um, so in the U S I mean, I've never heard of anybody, you know, losing a limb to leprosy or anything. Uh, very is, beautiful. is it just because of the treatment and in Nepal, the, the, they wait too long to be treated or, or what? Because I mean, obviously the, the people you right. photographed here are, are really suffering and, and, and I yes. just don't hear about it here, but that's the deal, huh? Well, I mean, again, it's it's not very well uh, talked about. You know, there's only a handful of cases that happen here in the U.S., but it, it definitely you see a lot of it in India, uh, in Nepal, uh, areas of Vietnam and uh, Asia. So um, it is still out there. Um, and like I said, there's about a quarter of a million people every year that are diagnosed with it. Wow, that's that's so sad that something you know could could impact somebody's life so much that that could be avoided. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons that I'm, uh, you know, I'm really doing this project is because just like you, you know, for myself a year and a half ago, I didn't know that there were leper colonies. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that there were people that are still catching leprosy. Um, and then when I heard about it, and, and to be really honest with you, once I saw the effects of it, the physical effects of it are, are one thing, but I will say this, the emotional effects are in some respects, even more damaging. Um, in these places, in the developing countries where they capture, where they uh, contract leprosy, I mean, their family completely writes them off. Um, you know, there was people that that I talked to in the colony that had been there for 60, 70 years. Oh, they, wow. They were taking their small children, um, and that's where they lived the rest of their lives. Wow, that's incredible. So, so tell us about the project, uh, the project itself. What what you're doing, your GoFundMe for, and uh, and how people can and can help. So, what I would say is, there's it's first and foremost. What I'm really trying to do is two things. One, I'm trying to educate people in terms of that leprosy still is out there, um, and it is one of these diseases that there is a cure. There's absolutely a cure, and if people are are seen by medical professionals early enough they're totally completely cured of it. Um, and the effects that are so damaging are eliminated. So that's phase one. And then the other part of it is, is these people were amazing. Uh, and it was really one of the most powerful moments of my life, uh, you know, photographing them. And what I really said to every one of them is that I wanted to come back and I wanted to give each person uh, a printed framed portrait. Most of the people in the colony had never been photographed before, had never had a portrait taken of them before, and had never owned their own picture of themselves. Um, the one gentleman who I told you about uh, who really kind of inspired the whole thing, you know, his image is what was of him in his early 20s. And he was probably in his, you know, mid 50s, late, you know, early 60s. And that was the only photograph that had ever been taken of him. And that wow. was the only photograph that he owned. So it's my hope to go back to photograph all of the remaining people that I didn't get to photograph in the colony and to actually physically, you know, hand deliver prints to each and every person in the colony. And so how, how can our listeners help? I mean, this is a really inspiring story. It's awesome what you're doing. What can we do to help? So, um, I do have a, a GoFundMe page going on right now, and you guys were gracious enough to to feature me on um, on your website. And yeah, if you Facebook. go to the if you go to the homepage of Improved Photography right now, you'll see an article about the the leper colony with with Kevin Custer. If you'll, uh, it's an article by Aaron Taylor. He did a great job with it. So uh, yeah. I guess we have links in in there. Yep, and or if you go to GoFundMe, um, it is uh, leper colony love laughter and photos. Um, my name, you know, under Kevin Custer. And what I'm really trying to do is to, you know, is to let people know that leprosy is still out there. It's very curable. Uh, but also to really, I, I think as photographers, we many times we lose uh, the sense of how valuable a photo is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Especially a printed photo. In this day and age, there's so many pictures, like they're everywhere. But this man couldn't wait to show me his photo of what he looked like in his prime. And that photographer had no idea how important that photo was that he was capturing. And I think that, you know, going back and, and giving people uh, a printed photo of a portrait that we've taken to them, you know, in some measure, it tells them that it's like, they still have value. They're still cared about, um, that their lives 
truly matter. And this is a physical manifestation of the importance of their lives. Um, I mean, most of us can't imagine not owning a photo of ourselves, Mm -hmm. you know? So, you know, I would, I, I, I'm really trying to reach out to photographers um, and, 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 and to, to kind of, in some respects, it's like, this is a way to, to do good, to, to allow people a certain um, emotional healing by receiving these these photos uh, and, and and understanding that they are valued, that they are love, and that their lives do matter. Ah, that's that's awesome. I thank you for doing this project. Uh, I'm excited by what you're doing and and appreciate you uh, and everything that you're you're giving to these people and and giving us the opportunity to help you to do it. So I'd encourage all the listeners if you'd you know go at least go check out uh, the GoFundMe and and see what Kevin's up to and and how you can. Uh, you know, maybe instead of using quite as much money on on just acquiring new gear uh, to to really do some gear to do some good here, Kevin. Thanks for being on the show. Uh, appreciate you and uh, and everything you're doing. Thanks so much, Jim. Appreciate right. it.